Welcome to part one in our series about home energy audits. In this segment, we'll be shadowing professional energy rater Byron Burns of Energy Logic as he does the general inspection portion of auditing our 1970 built home and gives us some energy and money saving tips along the way. Be sure to check out parts two and three of this series where Byron performs the blower door testing and furnace testing elements of our home energy audit. Now, let's meet Byron and get started. So Byron, maybe you can just tell us uh, sort of what your game plan is for this energy audit today. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is kind of just look at the, the whole house, try to get an idea of what's going on with all the systems, uh, what, what things are interacting with others, uh, try to figure out the AC systems and, and all that. Looks like you guys have done a pretty good job updating the, the windows and everything already for that. So we'll just kind of start looking into the, the smaller details. So the single pane glass in the, the door here, it's a fairly large energy leak. Just replacing the glass to either double pane or even the door itself. Uh, the door's all wood, which is good for aesthetics and things, but uh, a lot of times you find the, the cheaper doors down at uh, Home Depot made out of fiberglass have a better insulation value than a high dollar custom door will have. So those are uh, quick and easy things to replace there. Skylight here, this is great for the air or the, the light to be brought in for the entry here. It's only got the single pane glass on the, or that's plexiglass. So maybe even upgrading that to a uh, storm window, put an interior storm window in there and then just do all similar framing on the inside of it there. That would be uh, pretty helpful to stop the heat loss out that way. It's great to have that, that light right when you walk in. It saves on people turning on the lights in the middle of the day. So. Um, there's some things we could do just by placement that would really improve the, the efficiency of it. Right now we're on the south side of the house, mm -hmm. so this thing's going to get sun all year long. There's really nothing there to block it. you got some pretty good trees for the afternoon. But moving s some shade around it would be helpful. But, uh, you know, this one you could probably just shade around it. One thing you want to make sure of is that you leave a pretty good uh, air gap around it so that it has the ability to move the air like it should. But, uh, you know, even planting vines back a foot or two around it would be helpful that way as long as they, you keep it maintained and it doesn't interfere with its uh, use. Anything would be great to hold it in there. Uh, you could even, they, s they don't have them here. Um, if you have an HVAC guy come out here, they have clips that, uh, like or a lot of times they can, tension. yeah, something yeah. that'll actually, when you put it in there, it'll come down and hold it up against there, since that's the, the only <coughs> air seal you get. As long as uh, it stays in there when it's running the first little bit, the air will pull it and hold it tight against there. So it, all you need is just something there to hold it to make sure it'll stay for that little bit. Just in installing it. Cutting off a, you know, you could probably save a foot or two of that flex duct in there. Get it to where it comes down and goes straight in there. The less bends you have in it, the more efficient the dryer is going to be, the easier the air is going to move out of the house. And then it'll uh, work better for you, dry the clothes faster, and last longer. So. This one in particular is about standard. It's uh, 2.5 gallons per minute. Yeah. So one of the easiest ways to reduce your cost of taking showers and everything is to roll that down to a you know lower gallons per minute. The one thing you want to watch out for, a lot of times they use air to kind of pressurize it to get it to where it feels like you're using the same amount of water. So what happens when you use air to uh, do that is it cools down the water. So then you got to go down to the water. you got to turn up the, the water temperature on it to get it to where you can take a comfortable shower. Oh, yeah. So there's some trade-offs. So yeah, trade-offs. There are some pretty good ones out there um, that, that actually don't use that. I mean, and you talk to the engineers that design them. I mean, those guys are thinking about that stuff on the molecular level, you know. So, um, and they're using pressure regulating uh, to get that to, to work. So um, I'm trying to remember the, the one that uh, I had installed. Oh. 
and like up here in the corner, you can see a pretty good little spider web. So there's probably still, even with the damper closed, there's a good draft going up through the chimney, which is losing all the heat and everything. Um, they sell some balloon type uh, inserts that you can put up in there, kind of pump them up with a bike, bike tire, and that'll seal it better for you instead of just having the, the one damper. I think they even have a uh, little like remove before fire type things in them now that so that you'll have to actually see that and pull it out before you start a fire wow. and that cause really a bunch does. of issues in your house. <laughs> so, but those are good things, especially for the old style um, wood burning fireplaces. Depending on, um, you know, you on what you want to do. A lot of times, go into an insert. A uh, gas insert that has a uh, seal combustion, making sure that's sealed all the way through and uh, airtight when it goes in there. So it looks like kind of a double whammy for the, um, the whole house or the attic ventilation system. So it does have a temperature switch, which is good. Um, but as you can see, they uh, used a bunch of cardboard and uh, wood to pack down the insulation so that it wouldn't blow out the, the fan. Ah. So it's kind of ruined the, the value of the insulation right around here at least. And it does have a temperature switch set at 115. The fan itself is actually turned off. But, so like I say, maybe... You know, it's tough because uh, it's definitely something that's easy to be forgotten in the middle of winter if it's going to run, you know, or when it's hot in the wintertime, take all the heat out of the house. But uh, one of those things what we'd recommend would be increasing the insulation value, which it looks like you've got a fairly decent yeah. amount of insulation up looks, here. looks pretty thick up here, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and uh, it's a... You can kind of take a core sample over here and see you've got the white or the pink fluffy cube insulation, and then down below it looks like uh, rock wool, which yeah. is a pretty common insulation value for uh, the era that this house was built. And you can kind of see that you know it looks like maybe only about three and a half inches of rock wool originally, and then they blew in another probably what another ten inches of. Um, the fiberglass so uh, you know you're probably pretty well insulated and the thing with insulation and mul different types of insulation is you can just add it up they'll you know the the insulation the value of the rock wool you sum that with the insulation value of the uh, the fiberglass that's put on top of it you don't necessarily need to remove it unless there's bio stuff in there you know like mm -hmm. birds uh, or any type of rodents or anything that got in there and died but uh, for the most part, you can just add right to the top of it. One thing we always recommend doing when you're adding insulation is doing a fairly good job of air sealing first because air sealing is going to be the, the most energy gain from it. So if you scrape back the top plate and foam and seal up that, it's always a good benefit there. You've seen a few examples of how the general inspection portion of an energy audit points to some quick and easy ways to save energy and money. Now tune in to parts two and three of our home energy audit series where Byron gets out the blower door, infrared camera, and duct blaster gear to help us find ways to save even more energy.